Hello, everyone. Let me see if I know how to share my screen. Um, I hope everyone has been doing well this these past few weeks and months. It's been it's been exceptional times for for all of us. Hope you and your families have been keeping safe. I'm <clears throat> I'm delighted that we we have such a strong audience uh, again attending this this webinar. We had over a hundred people signed up in advance, and as said, this will be made available. For viewing later on on YouTube. Um, our webinar series has been very, very successful, and it's been great in these times where we cannot travel to meet people to be able to attract such a nice crowd. My talk, I will give a quick uh, overview of, of Invisible and discuss some of the highlights uh, of last year and, and, and this year up until this date. All the materials that I'm showing are available online. Uh, they're uh, available through our press releases. Uh, they're also available uh, in our investor pages on our website. Um, I'm not going to reread that. Very briefly, why we exist as a company, the intelligence is coming into everything. And rigid conventional forms of electronics are not suited uh, for this expansion. What we have been doing as a company from our founding is bringing everyday objects to life, uh, benefiting people in an increasingly smart and connected world. And while, how we have been doing that is we have been utilizing printed electronics to bring these simple interfaces that are very easy for people to, to comprehend. And furthermore, these are printed. So this is a technology that is truly scalable. When you can start to print these in different parts of the globe using these special inks that uh, our company has developed and, and, and delivers. So it's intelligence everywhere, bringing that human interface to the face of IoT and really stressing on the fact the manufacturing is scalable to high volumes. It's all based on printing using relatively conventional printing techniques that are found around the globe and, and, and using materials, base materials such as papers and, and plastics. Um, the displays themselves have a lot of uh, advantages. They're ultra low power, the lowest power consuming uh, display technology that we're aware of. They can be shaped, uh, molded into different sizes, cut into different uh, forms uh, taken inside of plastics into different materials. You have displays that are multi-use, you have some that are only single-use. Very diverse technology. Uh, we position this technology between the electronic display world and the printed graphics world. We talk about bringing graphics, printable graphics, to life. There's are starting to be sensors everywhere. You have several of them on your body right now. If you have a wallet in your pocket, even more. You have, you have, you have chips and sensors um, in the scale of trillions. They're talking of a trillion sensor economy. What we do is where that intelligence is in your credit cards or wherever, we're bringing the visual interface to that up to the point that you can use these in smart labels that can be attached to, to shipments such as packaging. In this example, uh, this smart label uh, has inside a shock detector and it can detect if the package has been dropped and, and, and visually then indicates that um, something may have gone wrong. Our company is focused initially on these three main sectors, logistics and retail, healthcare and wellness, and premium consumer products. We'll come back to, to some examples um, uh, later in, in these talks. Um, in times of COVID, there has been also a lot of uh, creativity around uh, where such visual indicators, displays can come into use. And it's great to have, have uh, different companies, uh, product designers approach us with concepts um, where, where the visual display provides truly valuable information to, to consumers, helping them in these times. 
Of course, what you see here, many are still in, in concept mode, but we're, we're, we're delighted to see this level of creativity. Um, for, for all companies, these past months have been challenging. Uh, certainly, we, when we had our planning last year, we could not foresee this happening, so our plans have been changed. But the, the nice thing is there has been a lot of momentum. Some client cases have been lost, other clients have emerged. For us, it's been actually very exciting times. A um, lot of new demands in the, in the society going forward. Um, more local production of products, brand protection, quality assurance, and of course, everything related to health. Our technology going forward will scale to, to a wide range of different uh, end applications. The, the nice thing we've achieved during last year is we've introduced our first ink kits that are now available to product designers. Practically anyone now can purchase our, our ink kits and start realizing their first product demonstrators, proving their concepts. And what is our business model? Our business model is we provide everything you need to get started with this printable display, electronic display technology. We have, during the past two years after going public, we have built the capabilities um, from design, prototyping, um, to, to high volume manufacture. You'll get to meet members of our management team in our different locations, and then you'll get a sense of the work we do there for clients. And again, highlighting these ink kits, uh, there we're selling them already, display kits, we're seeding the markets, we're spreading the message, this technology is here, it's here today. It's available for purchase. Um, brief corporate overview, we are headquartered in Vancouver, um, but most of our operations today are, are based in Europe, uh, partly due to the fact that there has been a lot of printed electronics pioneering work uh, taking place uh, in, in Europe. Our, our facilities we have in, in Portugal, we have our design um, prototyping sheet to sheet printing. In Freiburg, Germany, we have our inks lab. That's where we do the ink formulations. Um, and in, in Sweden, we'll talk more about this, we have our roll-to-roll -roll manufacturing capability. Um, in terms of markets, we'll get to hear, I'm delighted to have Raku Das from ID Tech X joining us. They are the leading market researcher in our space. <clears throat> He'll talk about um, organic printed electronics in general. Um, we follow their reports very closely, but at the same time, we also look at the printing uh, world. We see ourselves bringing new tools to these, these thousands of printing locations around the planet who are looking for new business opportunities. And we see ourselves and printed electronics carving out great new uh, business opportunities um, for the printing value chain. Some milestones and targets that we have com communicated. Um, since going public, we have built these capabilities to deliver. Um, you will hear more about these capabilities. And I wanna thank all our investors for, for, for your continued investments, uh, support to us. Um, these funds have been put to good use. Um, we have that full services capability. Looking ahead this year and next year, we are looking to, to scale. We're looking to, to go from more and more from prototyping for clients, which are now under confidentiality agreements to a large extent. So unfortunately, we're not able to disclose all the names of the clients that we're working with, but we hope these will rapidly reach a phase where we can publish the products that we're working on with, with our clients and bring them in scale to market. Furthermore, our aim is to go from providing these services to a future where we sell the designers, the tools for designing uh, these products, the inks for the manufacturer and the quality control. And we have now systematically embarked 
on building our product portfolio. So quickly, a review of some of the highlights from last year. Uh, and Alicia, if I start running over time, give me a warning. Um, some highlights from last year. We announced a collaboration with Fraunhofer. Those of you in Europe will have heard of this name. They're the biggest um, um, research institute in Europe. They have uh, some uh, massive um, developments uh, in research in electrochromics. We're partnering with them in that field. Uh, we announced uh, customer relationships in smart labels, security, diagnostics. Um, the big news in August last year was the acquisition of Consensum Production. Uh, Consensum Production um, operate, operates or operated a, a roll to roll manufacturing line in, in Linköping, Sweden. And there's an image there. We'll be visiting Linköping later on in, the, in this webinar. But what happened with this acquisition is we leapfrogged into roll to roll manufacturing. We gained business by being now a, a, a contract manufacturer of printed electronics for roll to roll. But also, we now have the facilities in which we can take the electrochromic, the electronic display into high volume manufacture. We acquired that in, in, in August, uh, renamed it uh, Invisible Production. Um, if we had built this from scratch, we would have required way more funding and way more time. So this was a very nice fit for, for us. We made a couple of uh, very good appointments last year. Petteri Stramberg, who, who you meet later, uh, is uh, head of product management, putting emphasis to, to building our product platform. And then in November, in November Tommy Haglund um, joined um, as our vice president of sales and marketing. In November last year, we also strengthened our boards. We, we board, we'll get to meet uh, Michael and Leif later today. They bring us a lot of uh, valuable experience, diverse perspectives uh, to, to the company. Um, we announced uh, roll to roll client agreements in the sense Epishine. We announced a partnership with Electron Inks, bringing our displays into educational consumer electronics. A few words about that later. We announced a client partnership with Identiv, bringing our visual displays into smart labels for, for data logging um, uh, of temperature tracking. More about that later. To end the year 2019, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say that we, we were able to, to go from practically no revenues to exceeding 300 thousand dollars Canadian in sales. I, I feel we are off to a, a good start. Um, this year, our internal target, not our forecast, but our internal target is to exceed one million Canadian dollars uh, in, in revenues. Um, let's, let's hope we can meet that target. I think we are on very good, very good track. You'll hear about what's happening in, in sales and marketing. Plus, you'll see some of the releases we made recently. Also, with the acquisition of, of, of Consensum, um, our assets are now, now much stronger. For more details, go to our website, and, and, and through there, you can find links to the MDNA and financial statements. This year was off to an excellent and fast start. We attended several industry conferences. We made joint demonstrators with Happy or Not. You may have seen these feedback terminals at the airports when you used to fly. Uh, we demonstrated how these feedback terminals can go practically everywhere. We announced in Roll to Roll Lingna Energy, uh, wood-based battery, um, as a client. Um, okay, there's a typo there. Uh, we announced a collaboration with NXN Licensing on new colors for electrochromics, plus a, a, a prototyping project for a Fortune 500 company in the medical and diagnostics devices sector. Um, then recently, 
we announced the acquisition of the electrochromic display business of RDOT AB from Gothenburg, uh, Sweden. And what, what is happening here is we, are, we significantly strengthen our sales and marketing team, brought new assets for digital marketing, um, and increased our client base. Tommy will talk more to, to the RDOT acquisition, but it was all about strengthening our sales. And most recently, we were delighted to announce a co collaboration with Ebonic. This is a world leading specialty chemicals group with over 13 billion euros in annual sales. And they have been uh, developing a printed battery technology. And we were able to demonstrate that our displays can be combined with these printable batteries. And the beauty of all of this is Printing of these batteries uses the same technology of printing as we use for printing of displays. We're taking systematic steps to printing the entire system on the same film and substrate. So our client base is growing. Uh, have, have, have many, many clients and, and uh, have to say thank you to all our clients. It's been wonderful through these, these uh, weeks and months now with COVID to, to, to have had that momentum together with you. Our partnerships uh, are, are growing as well. We'll hear more about that. A few words. I know I'm probably already exceeding my time. So we have, have been building our management team. We have been uh, strengthening our board. I always like to also refer to our advisory board. Uh, the diversity and experience through there. Dr. Michael Okorafor, a, a veteran in the branded uh, packaging world, Coca-Cola, Heinz, now on in McCormick, responsible for sustainability and packaging. Harlan Biker, who has made the most influential inventions in the field of electrochromics. Gentex is a company to look up if you want to see where Harlan's work has gone. And Harry Coppola, one of the pioneers in, in, in printed electronics. Um, his initiatives have led to tens of startups. So I'm, I'm, I'm delighted to have such a strong team uh, in, in Visible. And I, I thank all our management team, um, board members, and advisory board members for your very, very strong active contribution. All right. Um, next on the agenda, I'll, I'll, I'll keep talking. We had a uh, promise to, to um, give an overview of, of um, the webinar series that we've been, we've been running. So before we go to Raku, let me, let me um, if Felicia, you give me control back. Okay. Right, thank you guys. Um, all right, can you see my screen? No. No. Why is it not? This sometimes happens. Sorry. We are very experienced with Zoom these days, but uh, still, there's always a little issues. All right. We were to have run a video for four minutes. The sound does not come come true uh, through through the system. So I will quickly explain some of the highlights. All of these videos are available through our YouTube channel. So go take a look. They're all there, uh, just giving some highlights. Our first session was on printed electrochromics. By the way, why did we start this series? Many exciting events that we had planned for, uh, our, our marketing push for the spring, obviously had to be canceled. Um, we wanted to find a way to, to engage with our clients. And, and that's why we started this webinar series. And I'm delighted to say we've had, we've had viewers from now over 45 countries. Truly global audience. We were, we were amazed. We, we first got a package for 100 seats. We had to increase it to 500 seats because of, of the, the, the high viewership. So this uh, first one series was looking at our core, printed electrochromics. We started off with, with uh, our CTO, Carlos Pinero, talking about where is electrochromics today and where is it, it heading with our developments in printable electrochromics, really expanding the markets for that. 
Um, the next talk was from Georgia Tech. Uh, this was a, a, a look from a scientific perspective of how new colors are coming into electrochromics. Georgia Tech has been doing some fundamental work in, in, in electrochromic colors um, that, that um, allows our field to, to expand um, electrochromics into new, new color spaces. Um, our partner, NXN IP, um, their, their uh, CEO, John Quine, gave an excellent talk about how we're working together. Um, offering these new colors that they've licensed from Georgia Tech, bringing those into the inks and the devices that we develop and, and bring to, to clients. And in his talk, he mentioned work on, on color changing fingernails, color changing furniture, flexible displays. Um, he, he mentioned a wide range of application possibilities of, for the work that we're doing together. Um, then we had a talk from Ashley Colley um, from the University of Lapland. Um, we are working in this group. Uh, it's, a, it's a nearly 7 million euro um, EU co-funded project that is introducing electrochromics to the design community. Giving designers a chance to, to learn how to work with this new emerging technology. And um, you'll hear more from the, about this from, from uh, Carlos, but uh, the, the nice thing about this, this project has been that they're carrying out these workshops around the globe. So many people are getting exposure now to this technology. All right, that was the first session. Second session was focused on smart labels. So logistics, retail, big focus for us. Label type applications is a, is a big, big field. Why? RFID. RFID, this is when you have your contactless uh, payment card. The chip inside uh, is, is RFID. Um, RFID is now now everywhere. It is in many ways a, a, a backbone for a lot of the Internet of Things applications. Claire Swedberg, uh, a reporter, a journalist who works for uh, uh, RFID Journal, the leading journal in RFID field, talked about that field and, and her insights on the hot topics. Food supply chain, healthcare industry, uh, and that's where we have been identifying business opportunities for ourselves as well. Um, then we had a, had a very nice talk from our partner, Identiv, um, essentially talking about where do Identiv and we work together. And that area is very much healthcare. Um, Vera introduced Identiv's um, temperature tracking label and the entire solution, and how our visual interface is a core element now when they take the, this technology and their, their product to the healthcare sector. If you really want to understand how our technology is being put to use today, take a look at, at this uh, talk by Identiv. Um, then our very own Samuel Strandberg um, has our business development, 22 years of experience in the RFID sector, talked about how, where the value of our visual indicators is in the RFID space. We call it RFID plus. And it's really those spaces where you don't need or want to have reader infrastructure, but you just want to look at a label and see is everything okay or not? All right, I'll try to pick up speed a little. Third session was focused on bridging industry needs with, with what we're doing in printed electronics. We had a talk from Andrew Dent from Material Connection. These are a New York, uh, New York City headquartered um, um, new materials library. Product designers, from global brands can go into their facilities and hands on get a feel for these new materials. He came and he, he shared some insights on 
where he sees opportunities for printed electronics in our technology as well. And, and certainly one big trend is smart everyday objects in IoT. And again, healthcare came up. I mentioned earlier our collaboration with Electron Inks. Um, Brett, their CEO, came to talk about it. They offer these kits not only to schools and education, but also to product designers who want to get to, to learn how to work with this new technology. And they, they have started now to include our displays into the kits that they sell. Um, very, very um, um, engaging way to get our technology again into hands of designers. Nice distribution networks. Our head of design, Jarno, then talks in general about designing with, uh, with um, printed electronics, uh, printed electrochromics, and um, yeah. If you want to learn how to design with uh, our technologies, take, a, take a, a view of his talk. Finally, last session that we had, I believe a couple of weeks back, there we talked about printed systems, RISE, um, um, Applied Research Institute in Sweden gave the talk and, and talked a little bit about what's happening in Sweden in the ecosystem. Um, great applications emerging where there are needs and demands for our displays as well. Um, we announced the collaboration with Ivonic and Ivonic uh, talked about how their printable battery is providing the energy autonomous uh, systems for IoT. And finally, we had our head of sales, our vice president of sales, talk a little bit about how these um, technologies came together and what we're offering in Sweden.